Okay, so my game doesn't have any sound in it, but so far um, what you can do is uh, it'll do its scrolling and it's got a little bit of animations there so you can kind of follow along to see how I did that. All that source code is there for you to see. Um, I've got this moving thing so you can see how that does. I mean, it'll even bump my character. Um, it'll allow me to ride on that character. I know that is something usually in a platform game. So it's not too inspired. I mean, you can certainly do things like move diagonally and whatnot, um, you know, change the way the blocks move. Um, I'm just going simple horizontal, but whoa, almost. So basically this platform, I'm gonna run from there and jump onto that castle and that's the goal. So when you touch the castle, this is second level. So you can look at that code and see how did I do that? Basically I have an in that castle class, that code is there for you too. I called it a goal. When something is touching the goal, when the player is touching the goal, it switches the world to the next level. So there's, you know, the way you manage that, you're gonna have more than one level, but you can have a look at the beginning of it to see how I did it for two levels. So now my character's here. Ooh. And uh, I can't even remember. Oh yeah, I've got more bricks and things. So um, anyway, you can play around with that. Once you fix my loops, you should be able to do what I'm doing. Um, I'm using the, uh, let me just see here. Yes, this is the, uh, this is the one that's completed code. So let's talk about your tasks then in completing the code. Now, when you make your levels, one thing that can be kind of annoying is building it. And right now you might be doing it all by hand. So this is the class that I'm gonna ask you to work on. It's called the World Builder class. And I'll pull up your copy of it. So your copy has the empty loops. So for example, you can ignore everything except where I've put the code that says write your loop here. The version I'm about to show you has the loops done in it. So you can see what the end behavior will be. It might help you understand what your expectations are. Okay, so there's three of them. One, two, and then the last loop is in here. I'm happy to talk to you about what the other code does, but um, basically uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on each method one at a time. But anything you'd like to know a little bit about, I'm happy to explain to you, but you can just use this code for now. So here's what a world builder does. Um, I'm gonna build a subclass. So for me, um, I used, I just downloaded a really big background, hence the really descriptive name, big background. Uh, you can, wherever you want, you know, you can make it just a plain black image or white image and add your objects to it. But this represents what's in the background and does not affect your character. So um, I'll call this the example world. And I'll ask it to be built. Um, compile this for a second. And then I'll create a new uh, example world, just so you can see its purpose here. Um, six, four, remember, 600 by 400 is cropping that image. I actually want the entire image size. So my image was 1500 by 768. So that's what I'm gonna use here. And what you'll notice happens is now I get these ugly scrolling bars, and some of you might have seen this before, right? You play your game, you have to pause it so you can scroll with the mouse. Well, we just talked about the code that scrolls automatically for your main character. But when you build your level, it's nice if you can see the whole thing at once, right? And that's what this will allow us to do, is place the objects in the entire world, even though the actor's only seeing part of it. So what the world builder is gonna do is, there's methods that can help you out. For example, um, the first thing that you're, you're going to code, um, here's yours. The first thing that you're going to code is this one here called add random. So let me show you what it does. I can go back here and I can say add a random. And in my game, here's a bunch of the platforms I have. So why don't I add a bunch of barrels? I, I don't have a better example here. So we'll just uh, add some random barrels and give me 10 of them. What this will do now is grab the world, stick 10 random barrels into it so that this is where the barrels would be all over my screen when the game starts. 
So maybe you have like a main, a bad character or something that you're collecting and you want to stick random objects around your screen. So here's one configuration for level one, okay? Then you might say to yourself, I don't want things to be random. The next method is called adding a line. So I'll show you a few examples of how a line can work just so you kind of get a sense for how it could be used. So down here, I'm going to say add a line. And this time I'm going to use this red brick here. So it's called the ground class. And I'm going to start when x equals 0 and at 700. And let's just say that I would like, um, let me see, how about uh, 10 bricks. And what this represents is where the next brick will be. It tells you how much to change. So for example, if I want the bricks to be exactly in a horizontal line, that means I want 100% of the brick before the next one appears. If I go like this, there'll be 150% of the brick. So a brick plus a gap, which is half as wide. So this is uh, for a horizontal line. Don't change the Y coordinate. So when I say OK, this is what I'll get. 10 bricks in a line. So I basically built a platform without having to drag and drop them all by hand, and it's a perfect straight line. Then you might say to yourself, okay, where's this? This one's X coordinate is at 270, and its Y coordinate is at 700. So I'm gonna now add a line, but I'm gonna make it climb up. So I'll show you a little bit more to give you some sense of what's happening. So let's say I'm using the ground class still. Now, I'll start this at 275, and it was at 700, so let's, let's make it go up a little bit. And I'm going to ask for 10 of those bricks. Um, I'm going to use gaps, though, 150%. And instead of being a um, uh, straight horizontal line, this means it'll move up by the same height as the brick. So 100% of the brick will be the change. So when I say OK this time, Oh, of course, I went down by mistake. I should have put a negative in there. But this would be the platforms that allow me to jump on the way down. So let me just recreate that. Um, this is the ground with uh, 275 and 690. Give me 10 bricks. Leave a gap. And it should be a negative one. So now they go up this way. So again, the purpose here is you can build your level. You don't have to just drag and drop things in by hand. You still can, right? I mean, maybe here you want to put a moving brick. You know, maybe that's where your moving brick goes. Um, and then the last method that I want you to be able to create and make it work is the uh, make method. And here's what make method does. Um, it goes through the entire world and it spits out a method for you to use. So it's best if I show you an example. So I'm going to say make method, and now it's asking me to save it. So behind the scenes, it built the method. And I'm going to say, OK, on my desktop, this is my method example. And it'll save that file for me. Don't worry about the file saving. That's not your job. It's all in there. Uh, let me see here. Where'd it go? There it is. I've done all the code for the saving and uh, the file, but here's what it did. And what this is, is it just made a method in Java for me. And it spat out all of the actors, where they are, and how to stick it into my scrolling world. So I'm going to copy this code and show you how I could use it. I'll go into my uh, scrolling world. I'll create a new one. This is the class scrolling example. And see this window you're seeing right now has these things on it, right? Um, what I'm going to do is go in here and paste that method. So here's that method that Greenfoot made for me. I didn't have to do any of that by hand. And I'll just call that 
initialize world. So what'll happen is it'll add all those objects for me right when it's built so that that way the level starts out how I want it. But I didn't have to go through and build each object by hand. So I got a lot of objects, all the placements I wanted fairly quickly because of that behavior. Okay, um, and because this is a scrolling world, I think I'll have to uh, do this to demonstrate what would happen here. So I'll add the main character, um, a new player, and let's put him at, uh, I don't know, 50-50. And then I'll ask for a scrolling example that the class made. So what you'll notice right now, um, I'll move him away from the barrel, um, is there's the world that we made before, but now it's in a scrolling world. So I don't know if I can jump on that barrel. Yeah, okay, and I'm going to die. Ah, I'm not very good at video games. I think I've told you this. It's kind of ironic that I'm Java, pretty good at video games, horrible. So let's see if I can get any... Ah, ah. <laughs> But you can see it's scrolling. Those are all the things I added previously to my level. So maybe this is level one of my game, and I was able to use that class that I'm asking you to finish to help me build it. Now, I'm not saying that you have to use this class when you build your levels, but you have to make those loops for me that are missing so that I can see you've got some understanding of how the loops work. Okay, so that's what should be finished for you, and you'd be able to start building your own levels to add to your game as well. All right, the rest of the time is off to you.